Lisa, when I was about 18 years old, I weighed about 180 pounds. I'd worked out, mm -hmm. I was muscular, but yeah. a lot of fat as well. Uh, a half century later, I weigh 130 pounds, but I can tell you it's a battle every day mm -hmm. in order to keep weight down. Obesity yeah. is a problem. I know that, but you've really studied it in terms of very seriously looking at uh, uh, aging and blood and and, uh, and uh, degenerative diseases. Uh, what is the problem of obesity and how serious is it? There's this obvious formula that promotes obesity, which is simply that we uh, take in too many calories that we don't burn. So we eat too much and we're sedentary and we have positive energy balance. But we're so over-focused on that. It's much more complicated than that. What happens in our body is partly, uh, how, how much fat we store is partly a reflection of what chemicals and hormones are there at that moment where you're flooding yourself with excess calories. And if there's a lot of stress hormones that fat is going primarily to one spot, and that is the intra-abdominal fat cavity. That's the stress fat, stress fat. We store it there when we're stressed, and stress hormones open up those, intra, those visceral fat cells. They're just covered with stress hormones because when we're stressed, it tells our body we need that instant energy depot to be really as big as it can. Don't put it in the periphery. Don't put it in the hips. Um, put it all right there because that... The way that the fat is structured there, it opens up immediately when we need energy and it's constantly pouring its contents, the um, free fatty acids, out into the blood. So if you have, you know, the big pot belly, you're also having a lot of fats in your blood at that moment, but you're especially well equi equipped during times of famine. You're going to... Um, and times of stress, you're going to get a big outpouring. So that's one part of it. Um, if you just eat, if you give you know rats junk food for a few weeks and they're not stressed, they really don't gain that much. It's adding the stress to it, and then mm. you see the abdominal mm. obesity and eventually mm. the disease, the metabolic disease. But it's not just stress. We think that we are aware of all the influences controlling what we eat. And it turns out it's mostly an automatic behavior. There are so many aspects of things in the environment or um, in our head that we're not aware of that are, choo that are really influencing what we eat. So here's what I mean. If you sit down and have a big social meal with lots of people, you're going to eat more than if you were alone. If I bring you a bigger plate than your usual, you're going to eat more than you would have. If you've just gone through a stressful event, you're going to be selecting the dense calories. That means the high fat, real highly palatable calories. You might not even be aware that you're, you're, you're choosing differently, but that's what the brain does. Whether we're, you know, a chronic overeater or not, it shifts what we crave. The claim is that evolution has driven us to that. Exactly. Because times of famine, those yeah. people who, who would had that disposition would be more likely to survive. Right, right. And then there's another piece of it. Some of us are gen you know, genetically prone to just have a different reward center. And so um, what we know with obesity is that they tend to have hyper-responsive reward centers. And uh, it, there's both becoming obese that's damping down our ability to experience rewards, so you just want more. And there's also a predisposition. People who have addiction in their families tend to have their dopamine 2 receptors are, uh, there are fewer of them. They're not experiencing that, that same kind of bang for the bite that most of us are. So, so that means that they need a, a, a bigger kick yeah. to get the same level of satisfaction. Right. Is it chocolate or McDonald's or is it maybe a, a drug of choice, you know, drug, a substance that they're abusing, alcohol or right. another drug. Yeah, but it's, yeah. A, it's the same thing. They need more of it. Yes. But that's a biological factor is what right. you're saying in those. But so it's, it's, it's moved around by our environment. So our early experience shapes that reward system. There are two factors we have to think about. So one is that drive, that drive to eat, that reward system. And the other is the break. So stopping. We don't really think about that, but that's the real one of the biggest problems in obesity is we don't stop in time. And that is related to impulsivity and our ability to inhibit behaviors we don't want to do. Yeah, all of these are brain functions in one way or another. These are very basic brain functions. This is part of executive function. But what's fascinating is that shaped early in life. Mm. 
So children. When you say early, is how oh, old is early? Um, you know, possibly in utero, but really? the studies are showing, you know, children preschool of preschool age, for example, or under more stress are showing worse executive function. And this is um, independent of obesity. So, you know, they're set up for less of an ability to delay gratification. Yeah. For example, that marshmallow study that uh, people talk about where um, kids are presented with a marshmallow and they're asked to, you know, wait to eat it. And if they wait, they might, yeah, they're going to get two. Yeah. And so then they count the seconds before they eat it. Yeah. And the number of seconds predicts adulthood obesity. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. It is. So what, what was what was it about for you yeah. when you were a little bit um, muscly but chubby? Did you notice any reasons you were overeating? Or? I, I, I don't think I was necessarily overeating. Mm. I just think I was just being a normal person at mm -hmm. that point. Uh, yeah. I was in medical school and doing lots of academic stuff and using food and exercise yeah. to reduce that kind of stress. And then, yeah. uh, and then when I learned that you should eat healthy and be light, I sort of forced myself to make a change. Yeah. It was very difficult. And now you're very lean and fit. Uh, and, and, and it's a battle every day. And tell me about that. What's <laughs> yeah. the, how much, how much uh, mental energy does it take to um, Not over. I, I guess yeah. I've gotten myself into a, into a position now that if I if I do the opposite, mm -hmm. I'm stressed. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take the energy anymore to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it it's sort of a habit that has been reinforced so much that uh, to do the opposite creates the stress. To choose unhealthy foods. If I if I was forced mm -hmm. to eat other food, if I'm mm -hmm. traveling or I can't mm -hmm. exercise, I, then mm -hmm. I feel stressed. Yeah. So you've really conditioned your, reconditioned yourself. Yeah, but yeah. maybe maybe overly so. Mm -hmm. and so yeah. I get stressed when I shouldn't and yeah. maybe a little bit more uh, uh, obsessive than I should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? Uh, well, I'm the type who eats less when I'm stressed. Oh, that's so good. it's. Uh, if, you, if you bottle that, you might be able to <laughs> make a million dollars. You know, we don't, we, we study the overeaters and, and people struggle with weight. We don't know much about the stress under eaters. Mm -hmm. um, it's. Uh, it's still not healthy. So there's, you know, the, the few things we know about highly stress reactive people who don't eat as much, they still have a, uh, they, they, they can still preferentially distribute fat in the intra-abdominal area, the <laughs> part that's unhealthy. So even though someone looks really lean, if they're having a lot of high cortisol, they have too much intra-abdominal fat compared to all the rest of their body. So anorexics, for example, they have high cortisol mm. and they have a, mm much a really altered balance mm. of fat. Mm. Yeah. But the bottom line is, is that obesity is a product of really all the, a, a, a complex combination of many diverse behaviors that we have as human beings. Right, and it starts really early. Our, our efforts at weight loss have completely failed. And so now we're looking at how can we shape that, all those basic functions of the brain, the, executives, um, the executive functions in the brain from birth on. So we're taking obese pregnant women and we're trying to help them both reduce their stress and educate them more about healthy food choices. And this has been a phenomenal study, partly because it's so hard to not gain excessive weight if you're low income and you're obese, even if you really want to. Mm. You join our study and you come. So we're finding a lot of success. We find that 100% of our women who are not in our intervention, but are matched to our, the women in our intervention, uh, gain excessive weight and have some sense of food insecurity. And then of the women who go through our mindfulness training and our nutrition training, 60% gain excessive weight. Mm. Do we celebrate that? Mm. We still have 60% of women who are trying hard gain excessive weight. It's a hard system to reverse. So with our improvements that we're seeing in our women, we're now following the babies and we're seeing uh, if they come out with less adiposity and less of a stress reactive temperament. And so far it looks promising. So the women, the, the pregnant moms who actually do show reductions in stress look like they're having babies who are um, less high in baby adiposity mm -hmm. and less stress reactive when we probe them and test them. So that's exciting if it works, but, it, but it's, you can see it's an uphill battle if you're starting off obese.